Pongzani is a Myanmar human rights activist and co-founder of Forces of Renewal Southeast Asia. He joins us now from uh, London. Good to have you with us uh, again, sir. What do you make of the involvement of these ethnic armed groups in the uh, protests? Well, it reflects the popular desire to have some kind of protection in the absence of any prospect for the United Nations Security Council uh, doing anything meaningful, uh, for instance, the uh, triggering or applying the responsibility to protect doctrine when a state, a member state, fails to discharge is a uh, the mission of protecting and promoting well-being of the people. That is the doctrine that ought to be uh, triggered. But as you know, the uh, China and Russia will never go along with, uh, you know, uh, intervening in what they consider their strategic domain or even client uh, state. But with respect to the ethnic armed organizations, yeah, there is a, a, a radical reversal on the part of the majoritarian Burmese public that have been brainwashed to over decades to view these as insurgents, right? So these are communities that want to have a fair share in the way the country is run and the military is the major bloc. And so now the reversal is this. The public views the national armed forces that has unleashed unprecedented a degree of terror and violence against its own citizens, unbecoming a national army. So they, the public view the uh, national armed forces as simply terrorists and insurgents and want to have a, a federated army of uh, different ethnic armed organizations. We've got over two dozens of those, and this is an extraordinary situation. A standing army is rejected categorically by the society at large. OK, so the coup has... Uh, what you're saying has brought about a, a sense of, of social inclusiveness, if you like, after the army uh, yes. had forged o over years to, uh, uh, to divide the community along uh, religious and ethnic grounds. That's correct. Uh, th there are two things that, that are happening that have not been captured on cameras because it's not possible. One is the, uh, you know, complete and total ostracization of uh, the security sector, including extended family members, you know, children of generals, uh, cronies, families that have ties with the military by the society. You know, vendors would not sell water to uh, police or, like, you know, or food. And uh, um, also the, there is what they call, the protesters and the society call, social punishment. It's, it's the religious equivalent, uh, the society, society's equivalent of excommunication, excommunication of the entire society. So uh, the security sector and its a sub-social system. And the other one is forging of uh, in, an inclusive society that recognizes that Muslims and Buddhists and uh, other different ethnic groups, they do not pose a threat to each other. The common enemy at this point, they suddenly realize, is the national army and the, the, the generals that have unleashed okay. unprecedented uh, violence and attempt to put society back under the boot. And, and on a personal note, how, how does this make you feel? Well, I've been running on empty. You know, I, 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 I have criticised uh, my own majoritarian Burmese society. I am Buddhist and, uh, and I'm from an extended military family. For the last 10 years, I have blown the whistle uh, that our own society is cheerleading uh, the military's genocide against the Muslim Rohingya. I have been treated as a national traitor. Now, a lot of people suddenly wake up to the fact that I was telling the truth as someone who cares about the country. And, and so I, I am actually uh, very, very proud that our society has had this seismic, you know, Black Lives Matters consciousness type of, a, you know, shift in the attitude, and we, you know, just a few days ago, like a Chinese, a Burmese girl was killed in Mandalay. There's 
outpouring of massive sympathy and solidarity for her family. And so we are pushing ahead, uh, in addition to democratization, um, a, a new type of inclusive society that embraces people uh, simply because they are our own people, despite religious and ethnic differences. That is actually a major, major silver lining, however the political revolution ends in the near term. Really good to talk to you again. So many thanks indeed. Mongzani there in London. Thank you so much. Right.